70 2007 and 52 engine and we're gonna be replacing PCV or CCV or CVV particularly it's called CVV in this car or CCV which stands for a crankcase uh, vent valve or crankcase valve which is oil separator and a lot of cars have the same type of system CCV, uh, CVV, PCV those all parts they're doing the same job but BMW have kind of advanced technology and that P is doing same job but it's more advanced and more complicated so we have two choices to replace in the CCV or CVV valve uh, which is going to be uh, first spending 400 bucks for the new engine cover or the second one uh, we're gonna be replacing the piece and we're gonna use the second choice which is gonna save us like $380 because the part cost only 20 bucks and it's not gonna be that complicated to work with but we're definitely gonna need to dig a little bit into it uh, because it's welded to the valve cover uh, we're gonna need to remove it anyway let's hop into the garage and uh, check what we can do about it monster people say hello to the he wanted to be incognito and that's why I should do it see he said he's gonna suit me anyway as well that piece sitting right in the corner in there so we're gonna need to remove that plus That's the piece what we are uh, we're getting into. So before that, I want to talk a little bit about the Valtronic motor and a gasket for it, as well as the Valtronic shaft seal. So usually uh, it starts actually leaking a little bit. So as we could see, there is some uh, build up of that like grease in there, but it's not bad yet. You cannot replace that seal without removing the valve cover. So whenever you're replacing the valve cover gasket you have to replace that seal because that's gonna be a bummer and that's only cause um, N52 motors if you probably could see some oil inside somewhere like at the bottom of the valve cover question where does it coming from this is from the Valtronic motor gasket to replace the gasket you have to remove Valtronic and basically replace the gasket so it's pretty cheap if you, I actually gonna put the gasket in the description below so if you wanted to uh, find out what is going on with that. You're just very welcome to do that. Also, we have oil dripping out down there Same way from the valve tronic, which is just it is what it is Let's get into that spot remove couple uh, coils So to remove coils itself You can stick your finger in there and basically pull it out Also going to snap one zip tie which is holding the uh, wire pack so might as well uh, to remove that 8 mil nut on the other side to actually release the wire the tension of the wire that's what we do we basically take all those wires and fold them back all we need to remove that bracket here and it holds with the two t30 at the bottom setup uh, t30 the angular or whatever and extender and we got bracket itself so the next step is going to be to crack open the case itself which is welded to the uh, engine cover and uh, it also have three clamps all around so we're probably gonna need to snap those clamps and then start cutting it out the uh, CVV valve well, the thing is if you're not gonna install that piece right in a proper way it's gonna be sucking the air and basically the only thing going to be is replace whole assembly the cover itself and it comes with the CVV valve as well as some seals and stuff like that so that piece is gonna cost you roughly $300 or $400 so you better to consider either you're gonna replace it by yourself or you're gonna go to your local mechanic and he, he might gonna be able to replace that piece for you from that step I'm going to try to replace it crack the edge Now our valve inside, it doesn't look too harsh in there, but the job is already started, so there is no way back. Okay guys, camera just died, and believe it or not, I didn't film it, I don't know, from what moment. 
So after I slice it through the side, I grind the crowbar, the small one, make it as a chisel and start getting it into it a little bit. As far as I can see, it's still kind of soft. That side I sliced, which was right here. And the other side over there, I did not touch with uh, any. For some reason, there is two small holes and they crack. As far as you probably can see, there is little uh, oxidation on it, so it's not the fresh hole. Okay guys, uh, the next step is going to be cleaning, uh, which is we have extra plastic piece sticking behind. So we got out of it. So we have another piece, a little blade. I'm going to try to peel it out. You possibly could see there are like a valve spot. It's a factory type of seal, which is the kind of valve it together with the valve cover to not let it unpin itself or wherever. Killer black uh, gasket maker, one minute gasket. So now we have to center it everything and put in a proper direction in a proper way. Let it dry and uh, later on I'm gonna assemble everything, gonna put all the pieces together and after that we're gonna try to start the car. Isn't it everybody making mistakes? I think so, so super dumb. Of course you did see it and I knew there is a spring. I have no explanation why I did not install that. 20 minutes later and we're gonna test it out how good is the sealant. And I will say it's not good. <laughs> We're going to install the spring and then we're gonna put some more sealant. Let's get back to the cleaning and installing the spring. But it is what it is. From that point, the car would stay definitely overnight. Anyway guys, that was a quite a challenge. I was just uh, sitting in my computer doing something and like, yep, I didn't install the spray. Okay, and that's the moment of truth. Um, I'm kind of nervous because if we're gonna have the air leak, I'm probably not gonna be able. I actually gonna be able to drive the car because it's not gonna be sucking anything in, it's just gonna be the air leak. And uh, the RPM is gonna be floating RPM. It's gonna be pretty crazy and pretty rough. So we're gonna notice it right away. And definitely we're gonna have the engine, uh, engine side up. And a moment of truth. I'm not 100% positive about it. But as far for that type of start, uh, we usually had like rougher jumps and the RPM were just going up and down like a couple of times, pretty, pretty crazy. But still, since the engine cold, we're gonna get to the highway, drive it for 10, 15 minutes. As far as we're gonna talk about some other stuff. After that, uh, we're gonna park the car for 20 minutes and we'll start it over, which is usually doing the same stuff. Anyway, let's get to the road. <laughs> 